one thing I used to do was I used to color the whole thing, uh, smudges be damned, and and then come back with uh, my brush to wet everything, which is fine, except that, you know, if I was doing something over here, let's say with the bark, and said to myself, okay, I've got to remember to do, you know, approach this in however way. Um, by the time I'd kind of gotten everything colored and I was coming back to it, I would, you know, I'd lay down the water and then I'd be like, shoot, I forgot to do that thing. Um, and I also saw someone else doing this where they fill in a little bit and then color and, or I mean, add water and then color somewhere else, add water, etc. And I said, ah, oh, that looks like a plan to me. Another thing that I do, um, I'm very careful with what I'm doing with my brush. Um, uh, you'll notice that I've turned the picture upside down and um, I'm wetting some areas, but one thing I am doing is being very conscious of, of um, a lot of the time I push with my brush rather than laying it down and pulling um, the pigment toward me. Um, and this just helps me, you know, it, it pushes the pigment away. If I want a shadow in a specific place, um, it helps me get the pigment where I want it to be. And it, yes, it does mean that I'm turning my picture upside down every which way a lot of the time to when I'm laying down the water. Here I am consulting what I probably want for the overalls. Be careful that if you are getting ready to apply dry color, um, make sure that whatever's close that you just wet is dry and won't get, um, won't get your lead wet. Got a little bit of a cauliflower effect here. I don't know how to avoid cauliflower effects. I don't, um, I know it's something I do. It's operator error, um, and it's probably too much water, and I don't know what, and, um, but these are blue jeans, and, um, this is Carl, and they're gonna be old, um, denim, and, you know, it's gonna have marks and scuffs and all sorts of stuff, so it's all good. Here's another quick note. Um, I had two colors that I chose to work with. One was the poppy red and the other is the burnt orange. Um, kind of had a sense of what the color was going to come out like. Um, uh, for all that I'm acting like I'm really well planned out, I am taking a leap of faith. I grabbed something that I know is a darker red. I don't quite know how it's going to show up. Um, so yes on one hand i'm i i plan as well as i can but on the other hand i try to give myself a little space to have um hopefully it'll be a happy happy accident um i also kind of believe that it's important to um uh, sort of trust in the process and the that the outcome will follow but also this you know it kind of prepares me um Sometimes I don't like the accidents that I come across, and um, but I I go into my sketching knowing, hey, um, I need to I need to be my own good friend here and um, be supportive of myself regardless of the mistakes that show up. Um, more about that sort of friendship thing another day. So I got the lawnmower, um, the water applied to the lawn lawnmower last night, and gave it a break and came back to it just now, um, started filling in the shirt and the headphones on Tavon. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm enjoying the play of color, uh, on the lawnmower. There's on the original image, there's a little bit of sunlight coming through here and there. Um, I don't think I got that all that faithfully, but it's, um, I'm happy enough. Um, so anyway, I was going to do some filling in. And for Tavon's shirt, I did 
you know, I looked a little bit towards some orange and that the oak. Um, this is a little dark, so I'm going to play up the orange and downplay the oak on his shirt and we'll see how it turns out. Um, I started a little bit with his headphones, so I'm going to do that first and then get to the shirt. And as I did earlier, I'm pushing the color to where, um, from the light to the dark. So I'm going to do a little bit with his hair. Um, if you're careful there, you can manipulate the brush a little bit to, um, so I don't want to go in and just smear this all together. And if I go in with light strokes, just kind of dabs even, it'll um, kind of work to make that seem like hair. I'm going to do something similar with the grass a little later. Um, try not to um, anyway, I'm having a hard time saying what I mean to say. But. So I used my swatch again to kind of play with color, you know, it kind of feels like that's close enough to do some shadow, um, shadowy tones. I've got the two colors that I know I want to mix. Um, and then for Carl's hair, I'm using a pencil from a different set. This is from Derwent. And this is a, a brand that, uh, for me at least, leaves a lot of pencil marks, uh, which is in this case good because I'm going to want to have a little bit of sort of texture showing in his hair without fully, fully f filling in his beard and his hair um, and his mustache with gray. Skin is always a challenge for me because I tend to, um, I don't know, if you're working with a, a, a watercolor pencil that dries quickly, then um, you're going to have, um, you need to work fast to combat um, the issue with lines that's going to show up. The nice thing about the Ink tents, as I've said, is that they dry. Uh, there's, there's a you you buy a little bit of time for um, in the drying process, and I'm going to need to play more with these. The skin tone is a little more yellow than I'd like. Um, sorry, I wanted to show you what was going on without totally um, messing up and not showing you at all. And it's pretty nice how that's gone into the shadow there. Um, a slightly larger brush, but I want to be careful of how much water I've got in there. Um, and then I want to go in and push that shadow out. Um, A little too much water. Um, 
and I'm just going to lightly go in. See, I don't know that much of my pencil strokes that I keep talking about are showing or staying, but um, I really don't want to move that pigment around too much. Um, so I'm leaving, going in with light dabs and um, try not to mess around with the pencil strokes too much. Here I'm going to have to be a little more careful. And I don't know that I'm going to get to do what I want to do. Um, one of the things that I have enjoyed, um, you know, I try not to be too invested in a specific outcome. Um, and I try to enjoy the process more. And you can tell when I've been, um, well, I can tell when I've been too invested in the outcome, I tend to go through art blocks and struggle with, um, you know, sorry, we're going to interrupt because Tavon's come to visit. Hey, bud. How are you? Good. Can you say hello to people? Hi. Hi. Sorry, Tavon was visiting, so I we kept on talking, and I kept working on this while, while he was down here. Anyway, so skin tone on both is a little, it's a little too yellow, but there is, um, you know, when I look, look at my source image, um, you know, there's a little bit of glow around them from the trees, and I don't know. Um, so I guess what I was saying earlier is that um, I feel like the pro one of the the good side benefits of doing all this work with the sketching and so forth over time and trying to detach myself from outcome uh, expectations around outcome. Um, it makes me a little friendlier with myself when I do make mistakes and, and it helps me to give myself space to experiment. Um, I can tell when I'm afraid of making mistakes or if I have been too invested in outcome is when those artist blocks tend to show up. And so, you know, if I can approach my mistakes and my sketches with um, kind of some TLC toward myself, it allows me to keep showing up. Um, whereas if I'm hard on myself and unforgiving about mistakes and, and really invested in outcome, I won't be showing up so much. And I'd rather be showing up than not. So, um, and that ties into that sort of being friends with yourself. Um, and I will talk about more of that later because I, I think it's a huge deal. Um, all right, so I went ahead and laid in um, the co colors for the dirt um, for the driveway um, behind and in front of, well, kind of to the side of the mower. Um, there are some light patches where the sun's coming through, um, you know, kind of some dappling effect. I went ahead and laid in some grass along the edge. Um, I'm going to touch on it briefly, kind of the way I did. I didn't. Anyway, this is. I don't want to pay too much attention to the grass right now, but I also want to keep some of those pencil marks. So I'm going to go ahead and come on in and. And I'm not laying down my brush, you know, I'm hitting the pencil marks. Um, so I want some of that to stay where it is, but I don't want to mess around much with this white area yet. Um, I'll come back and do more with the grass a little later, but this will just kind of, I don't know that I really want to mess with all that just yet. Um, 
Come in and hit the lighter areas. And I gotta be care I gotta remember to be careful in the future when I'm doing this thing with the, the grass. I wanna make sure that I I don't wanna overdo it or underdo it with it, but um if if I draw grass in here and then I don't um take care to really get some of those pencil lines that grass color is gonna bleed into what's behind it. Um, I don't think it's done too terribly bad a job here. Um, and I think sometimes the amount of detail that I put in my artwork kind of shoves you know, I call these sketches, but I think it's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, but I feel really self-conscious about the idea of calling them actual paintings because it, you know, as if, um, as if that uh, classification, I don't know, there's just something about it. Um, but if I call them sketches, then that it's kind of some reverse psychology on my part. Um, I suppose, or something like it, where I, you know, if I'm calling it something where I'm letting myself know that I'm not taking it so seriously, um, it, you know, it's part of that permission to play. I don't know if any of that makes sense. It, you know, some of this makes more sense in my head than it does out loud. But anyway, I'm going to let the driveway be as it is for now. Sorry, I've got noise in the background and the furnace has kicked on. Um, One of the things I do notice is that um, I might have a certain stippling movement that I start with, um, maybe a little closer to stippling. As I go, I tend to kind of fall in, fall into a little different movement. Um, you know, maybe I'm in a hurry. Um, stippling is kind of boring, um, and. And it might be more natural to, um, I don't know, just see how, um, see what shows up as you're, as you're doing this and, and let yourself do whatever it is that starts happening. Um, that, I think that falls in line a little bit with the idea of, um, you know, this is, style is um i've heard described as the things you can't help but doing um and you may or may not want to um be strict with yourself and um try to force yourself to maintain something all the way through a sketch um what's showing up you know, it might, is it laziness or is it style? Um, I don't know, but I think, I, I know at this point that I will enjoy my sketch more if I let myself relax a little bit. So we're just gonna, you know, if I'm not doing the same, um, 
And if these leaves are the same as those and the same as those, but I'm not doing the same thing 20 minutes later, um, I think I need to, I need to relax and, and let myself do whatever this is. I'm kind of babbling now, but I, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. And give yourself permission to play a little bit with colors. This is um, kind of a as close to a sort of um, I don't know. Anyway, it's a sherbet yellow color, and I'm just adding it in a little bit here and there. Um, and some, it, you know, it's kind of like the tire thing, where I added purple and blue um, to create the tire. Um, it's fun to play around a little bit with. Um, with your colors and just see what shows up. Um, and if you don't like it, don't do it next time. And if you do like it, give yourself permission to do more of that. I think we're gonna, what I'm going to do for the field in the back is um, try to keep it bright um, without... And we're just going to have Not quite sure, but let's see what shows up. And I might not like what I'm doing at all when I'm done, but um, we'll just see. I don't really, um, I think one of the mistakes that I fell into early on was um, putting detail everywhere and not letting the, you know, my, the focus be detailed and the background be blurry or un, undetailed or, so this is, we're, making an attempt here to swing to the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, I know, I know what's out in that field, um, but um, random, a random person out there won't know um, what it is. Alright. I'm not worrying too much about this because later I'm going to come back with pen and uh, do a little bit of detail between the road and the grass. Um, right now it looks a little awkward, but we're going to um, we're going to let it be awkward for now and come back to it a little later. And I have some sunny patches where the sun's really hitting the grass over here. Um, I'm going to try and let some of that come into the 
to the sketch. Sometimes when I'm when I'm um, sketching grass, I tend to just write a bunch of M's over and over and over and over. Um, that's one thing that's kind of started showing up uh, over time is um, just a bunch of scribbled M's from time to time. I don't really like to come back, you know, I like to lay down color and I like to leave it alone and not, um, you know, if I tried to come back with something over here, um, personally, I, I don't like doing that. Um, grass, you can't really help it. And here, I can't really help it. I also think, well, I guess I'm not quite sure how to finish that thought, but, um, And I'm working with Bristol paper, um, and I don't know if you can see or not, yes, it's warping. I personally don't mind when my paper warps. Um, to me, that's just all part of, part of the personality of the sketch. I actually really like sketching in sketchbooks that are not necessarily for water media, like they can tolerate it a little bit but I, I do enjoy the buckling of paper. Um, usually in a sketchbook, you know, it, it lives on a shelf for a long time and, and it gets kind of flattened anyway. Um, but uh, it's just all part of that personality and it's lovely. A fair bit of the blues I laid down earlier coming out to play. I gotta be careful because the grass is still wet. So I don't want to set my hand down on the paper at all. And I've, uh, I have a tremble. Uh, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that about me. And um, that's one of the things that I've kind of had to come to terms with and incorporate into my sketches. Uh, and sometimes it helps the tremble, you know, it's, it's nice for the outline of trees and bushes. Uh, it's not so great when I'm trying to do things like the faces of people I want to be recognizable in the sketch or, um, and right now it's to my benefit with wedding, um, uh, the foliage back here. of the foliage. So now I've just got that um, field to do. And I'm going to try and not blend much. I just want to kind of... I don't want to have to worry about 
what's going on back there. So I'm going to be really light with my brushwork. Try not to drag mustard yellow through my dad's beard. That's it. Is that the water? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Sophie and I are having a side conversation. Sorry, with all the background noises. All right, so the the color has dried and um, ready to come back in with uh, some of some of the ink that I want to do. Gonna bring out a little bit of detail on the grass that was in the sun there. And a little more here in the shade. Doing this ink work at the end is another favorite part of um, sketches for me. There's something about the darker black ink over the over the color that just really makes the whole thing pop and it's just it's a delicious part of the sketch. And I'm gonna call it done. I'm really tempted to go in and draw you know do something in that background. I'm gonna let it go not touching it and we're gonna call this done. Leave it be, don't touch it, Nina, don't stop it, stop. This is where, you know, and then this is a pitfall for me where exactly what I'm doing right now is I said I was done and then I'm like, oh, oh, oh just a little more, let me let me tweak it here and, you know, just a little bit there and then it's it's overdone before I know it.